<laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're having some fun here, or glitches, however you want to look at it. But here we are gathered on a rather chilly Thursday morning. I understand that we have a cold front moving in for this weekend. But regardless of that, we're gathered here as our community of faith as we have been doing for days and days and days during this lockdown. And so a uh, little uh, background information. We do have a saint of the day, a Saint Rose Vener Venerini, V-E-N-E-R-I-N-I. -E and uh, she was born in Italy. Uh, Entered into a convent for a brief period of time. When her father died, she returned home to take care of her mother. Uh, and as she looked at her future and under the guidance of a Jesuit priest who was her spiritual director, she came to the realization that really her talents lay in teaching, not in uh, entering into a uh, contemplative convent. And uh, she made the right choice. She was very good as a teacher. She was a born teacher, really. Very good as a school administrator. And she opened up a school in 1685. It was well received. It was a school for girls, which is surprising at that time. Most of the time, girls really were not educated that well. And soon, the, the cardinal in her area asked her to administer all of the schools in his diocese. And this uh, ability and this talent uh, spread out throughout Italy. And she did a lot of work in that area. She died in 1728 was beatified in 1952, canonized in 2006. So you might want to do a little research about St. Rose, find out a little more detail about her life. A, uh, a woman of apparently strong character, strong motivation, uh, knew, was able to recognize where her talents lay and how she could best use them for the good of the people that uh, surrounded her. And so as we uh, enter into our Mass today, we begin as we always have, with the entrance hand upon. O God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And my friends, as we begin to pray this Eucharist, we turn to the Father and we ask for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings, Look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness, and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth. May you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessings. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The readings for the uh, Thursday of the fourth week. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verses 13 through 25. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived in Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the Law and the Prophets, the synagogue officials sent word to them. My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their lands as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel, the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. 
Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 13, verses 16 through 20. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you, if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen, but so that the scripture might be fulfilled. The one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send, receives me, and whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This week we've had a couple of uh, references uh, to uh, basically a flashback back to the Last Supper and the washing of the feet, as you heard here today. Even though we're well into the Easter season itself, we do look back at that particular event. Because in that event, and in the words of Christ is speaking to his followers who are gathered in that room, he's urging his followers, then as well as now, to serve one another as he did. Jesus has given service a dignity that is independent of the status society gives to people. In the society at that time, still exists today. You have those individuals that because they hold certain positions, they try to lord it over others. They try to dominate. They try to manipulate people to do what they want for them. Christ is telling us none of that is to be seen among his followers, that we have to strive to avoid those characteristics. It's difficult to do, but it is something that we as Christians are called to model ourselves after Christ. In that initial act there at the Last Supper where he takes the time to wash his disciples' feet. Service in the gospel is love in action. That's the important thing to remember. It's fine to have the the loving words that we speak about events in society, people in society, and all that. It's a very different matter to put that love, those words, into action, real action. It's a desire for the well-being of the other person. And that is actualized by service. Doing action for the good of the other. What does it mean to us that the words of Scripture are the words of God? Do we really, when we are reading the Scriptures or hear them being proclaimed at Mass or at some uh, prayer service, do we really see those words as the Word of God? God actually speaking to us 
to those birds. Do we recognize that when the lectionaries opened up on the pulpit, in a very real sense, very different from the Eucharist, but in a real sense, God is present to us. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. There is an abbey in New England, uh, St. Joseph's. If you go into that abbey, we're all used to the fact that we have the sanctuary lamp hanging beside the tabernacle here in the church. And in any Catholic church, you will find that red light, it's usually red, uh, burning to indicate that the uh, presence of Christ in the Eucharist is there in the tabernacle. In that abbey, they have that light, but they also have another one hanging over their lectionary to remind people that God is present in that word. And we need to pay attention to what it is saying. So if we do recognize that God is speaking to us in the word, that he's present there, then that example of Jesus is the way that God has chosen to live as a human being and challenging us to follow his example. Today we bring before our Heavenly Father the needs of our world, of our church, of our community, uh, of our families, of our own selves. And as always, we pray for our church, for its leaders, the Pope and the bishops, that they will be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. We pray for the members of the parish of St. Stephen. During this time of uh, turmoil, um, mixed messages coming out before us, a little bit of um, unsureness uh, that sort of flows through society at this present time. Beyond the fact that there is that uh, constant underlying fear of the, the virus and its impact, we ask that uh, we be blessed with God's strength, with an awareness that he walks with us, that uh, he is the one who brings the healing presence of mind, of body, of spirit, a presence that brings calm and gives us the opportunity to use the intellect that he has given us to rationally address the problems around us. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else should we pray? And for these we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those inten intentions that we hold within the privacy of our own hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. So will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. So will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of all of my sins. My friends, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable by God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands to the praise and glory of his name. For our good and for the good of all his holy church. Amen. And let us pray. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Rose and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me perfection. Per be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. And the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pass our lips as food, O Lord. May we possess in purity of heart. And what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Uh, two points, maybe three. I apologize. Um, you missed uh, a little bit at the beginning of last night's service if you were with us. Uh, technology befuddles me. I forgot to turn on the mic. So uh, apologize for that. Uh, secondly, uh, we will have another service tomorrow evening, Friday evening at 7. Service will begin at 7 o'clock. We will have quiet time beginning at 6.30 before the Eucharist to give you an opportunity for your own prayers, your own reflections. Uh, Tomorrow night's service is going to be geared towards um, the healing presence of Christ in our lives, a healing presence, especially at this time of dealing with this uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus. And so the, the whole prayer uh, program will be focused on healing presence of Christ. Uh, and one other, I, this is not a, an announcement, it's more of a request, it is a request. As we're moving through this period, we still have no idea how long we're going to be locked on and not being able to hold services here at the church. I'm um, uh, asking you, if you have ideas of what you would like to do on these Wednesday nights and Friday nights, different types of services, uh, different types of prayer cycles, uh, or if you want to also use it as a time for some other type of program that you would like me to conduct for you, please uh, send in your uh, suggestions to us here at the parish. Send them to my email address, fatherbrian at ssmrcc.org. Fatherbrian, ssmrcc.org. Okay. Thank you all very much. May you have a blessed day.